XAI released Grok Code Fast 1, and in this video we are going to test how well Grok can code using their new coding model, how well it can code creating things like Minecraft, GTA, Subway Surfers, and more. So we're going to have Grok Code Fast code some games for us right here in this video, and we're going to see how well it does in comparison to other models out there. So you can actually see their article here, and this was posted August 28th, so less than a week ago, and this is Grok Code Fast, and they highlight the positives, the advantages. They have actually teamed up with a number of people, GitHub Copilot, Cursor, Klein, RootCode, KiloCode, OpenCode, and Windsurf, and it is free for a limited time. So you can use it completely free, and it is supposed to be really fast. So they have some examples here, and it is also very, very affordable. So 20 cents per million input tokens, $1.50 per million output tokens, and 2 cents per million cached input tokens, which Again, very, very affordable, very, very cheap, but again, it depends on how well this model performs. So we have our Franklin AI website here, franklina.com, and we can go to more and we have AI code tests. So we can click that. And these are just a number of code tests that I use with other large language models. And I've been tracking the history of models and how well these models perform and operate. So let's start off with Angry Birds. Let's start off something somewhat reasonable. And we have a prompt here that says, hey, create a single file, HTML, CSS, JavaScript of Angry Bird inspired game. I want to have a menu screen, level selector, and 10 levels. So we are going to copy this prompt here. We're going to open up my VS Code. We're going to come here to Klein where I have Grok Code Fast. You can actually see here. So if I click it, we have Grok Code Fast. It is free for a limited time. And we are now going to enter in our prompt and we have a fresh project there's nothing here just so you can see and we can hit go we can hit play and you can see exactly how much money we're going to spend we can see it thinking it is going to create our game for us and as this is working i just want to talk real quick about the prompts the system how i have it all in place because i know some people are like hey you need to make a specialized prompt for the model but if you're running like a standardized benchmark that defeats the entire purpose of a benchmark if you're standardizing to each model. And also the level of detail. So you'll see this prompt here wasn't super detailed. Some of them are gonna have more detail than others. And apparently this thing is done already. So uh, that was quick. And that, that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be speed, right? So let's just open this up, try. So we have level one. This is off to a good start. This looks pretty good. Does it work? Um, game over. Okay, so I think, can we, I, I don't understand. It doesn't exactly work. Can I just, okay. Let's see in spec. Let's see if there's any like console log errors that are coming up. Game over. Okay, so we have Angry Birds and it works-ish, but let's just do a quick comparison to other models. So just show you how this works real quick. So we have code and this is the code of ChatGPT5. We can see Grok4, Gemini Diffusion. You can go through all the different ones. And if you hit preview, you can actually see what the code is for ChatGPT5, for example. So you can see how this one worked in comparison. And you can go through and you can play all the different Angry Birds. I don't think Grok Code Fast did a very good job in comparison to some of the other models that work better. So this one, you can see it's like struggling with the fling option, but if we go back, there are some models that are like really good. So this one's playable. Uh, if we see the, oh, here we go. So if you see the bird, this one's actually playable. You can play all 10 levels and there's like number of lives and stuff. So some of them are more playable than others, but let's add this code to the website. So now if you go to the website, you can actually see the Grok code fast one. You can go to code, you can see it all, what it outputted, and you can even see a preview of how it works. And you can see a piece of history now a little snapshot of how it worked and we can always use it to compare back to future Grok code fast models to see how it compares. In terms of Grok 4, Grok 4 didn't work at all. It was just like full-fledged buggy. So at least Grok code fast one does work and it does have a functional game, which is a positive. Let's go back to all tests and let's try the next one. Let's try Minecraft. And as I was saying, there are different prompt levels. So this one's a lot more detailed. You can see here, it gives a lot more information about what we are looking for. So we're just gonna come back here. We're going to take 
our file just so we're starting fresh. We're gonna hit delete. We're gonna come back here. We're gonna send through a new message and you can see that it is typing up our code and it is incredibly quick. You can see how fast it was able to do that, but is that it? Like, is it done? All right, here we go. So it's making the style files now and it's doing everything else. I was a little worried there for a second. I was gonna say, this is not gonna work. And now it's making API requests. It's creating all the different files we need. It's creating a game.js file. Uh, truthfully, for the website, I'm gonna have to combine all this code down because all my code on the website's like single file, but I'll do that in a second. Uh, thankfully, I know how to code and I can do that without messing up what it's done. But I wanna see what it can do just like bare minimum, basic, hey, this is it made the game, how well does it work? And it looks like it literally froze the entire browser. So that's great. Um, Grok, what did you do? It literally crashed. So let's hit wait for a second, hold on. All right, you can see take two, it is loading. And I just wanna show you this real quick. So it's using like 45% of my memory and that's 128 gigs. You can actually see all the different spikes and peaks that it's using and the CPU usage is going nuts, it's crazy. So you can actually see here, this is what it's made and I don't think this is playable because we are literally going frame by frame as we drop down. Um, Hello game? Can I move? Can I do anything? I mean, listen, it made Minecraft, but it's not optimized by any stretch of the imagination. So actually let's, let's take the time to do something. So I'm gonna copy all this code over first. Okay, so I quickly made a backup of all the code. So it's actually on the website now because I want always the first prompt, but let's see what Grok can do. So I basically said, hey, can you optimize the game so it doesn't take so long to load and won't use as many resources? So it says I've optimized the game for faster loading and lower resource usage. And here are the key changes. So it changed the distance, it changed different block camera views and different optimizations. Now we are trying the same game a second time to see if it was able to optimize it. And it is moving a lot quicker now. Look at this, we can actually move around. So we have a functional Minecraft game that has only dirt, that's just dirt. I can't really see what I'm doing. I can see the position, uh-oh. I'm like on the side. It's a struggle. I can jump and it's still super, super laggy. Uh, honestly, just looking at different versions that I've been able to generate in the past, like ChatGPT5, for example, which you can see how fast it is and this thing is really, really good. You can like dig and everything. I think this version is better. So that's just ChatGPT5. And if you kind of go through the list, we have Grok4, which that one just aired out. Grok4, I had a lot of problems with code and people are like, wait till you see the coding model. And here we are, we're, we're trying it. This is Perplexity Labs and this one was phenomenal. You can see how fast this one is and how you can like actually change your block types and it just kind of keeps loading and it's great. So Minecraft with Grok Code Fast 1, eh, not that great. Up next, let's give Subway Surfers, but with cars, a chance. So we're gonna come back here, we have our prompt, and we're going to go paste it in. We have our prompt in, we have no files, we're nice and fresh, and we're going to see what it can generate. So it's making its request like before, and it is coding. And honestly, I know some people, are, again, are going to complain about the process, the way I'm working doing this, I, just, I think it is a fair, fair test. So is that it? Is it done? No, it's still thinking. Okay. While the game is being created, I just want to show you some of the examples we have. So this is ChatGPT5, and I just want to show you what it looks like. You can kind of move back and forth. There's no ground, but we have a functional game with clouds, and you're basically just avoiding obstacles, and you can go back and forth. It's literally subway surfers, but with cars. You can hit play and nothing happens. <laughs> Grok4 didn't do a good job. We have Gemini Diffusion. We tried this on and that one didn't work. We have Perplexity Labs. You can kind of see what this one looks like. Perplexity Labs looked really, really good. And you can kind of see how it looks, how we're going back and forth, the clouds. And when we crash again, you lose. Claude 4.0 Sonnet. You can kind of see what this one looks like. This one was really good, but it was super, super hard to play sometimes because you can see how fast it comes. But again, crash, it's over. Let's see what Grok created for us. So this is Grok's version. We can hit refresh. So we have a nice fresh screen. We can hit start and um, okay. I, th I think I lost. Let's hit restart. Does the restart work? 
Is there any errors? Let, let's start there. Is there errors? No errors. But I don't really know what I'm doing. I mean, it looks cool, but it's not playable. That kind of seems to be a trend. Looks cool, not playable, but hey, we're gonna keep going. Let's try the next test, which is Sonic. So this one is a really simple one. Hey, make me a simple Sonic 1 inspired game, and for now, just use simple blocks. Let's go here, we're gonna put in our prompt. It's going to start coding for us. While that's coding, I wanna show you what some of the other ones were generated. So this is ChatGPT 5, so you can actually go through, you can collect rings. If you hit the red stuff, you're supposed to lose rings, which doesn't happen, but there's a running time. It feels like a game. I feel like with a couple more prompts, we could make this better. And I think that's something important to mention and note that all these are single shot prompts. And does that mean it's like the end all be all of code and Gemini Diffusion at work? No, it doesn't mean that it this one just said, hey, level complete. This one was not you, you just couldn't move Oh, the, the other arrows you can move, but it wasn't very good. It was just kind of funky. Um, it these tests are just more like, hey, this is how it codes off the start. So this is like Gemini 2.5 Pro, no modifications, no editing. This is what it created. This is the code it came up with. Again, this doesn't mean it's the best model. It just, the way I'm code testing, it's like single shot prompts. How well does this stuff code? So here is the Grok fast code. We're just gonna refresh, make sure we have the latest version. What are we using to move? We're using the arrow keys and the space bar this time around instead of WSAD and can we go anywhere? Nope, this is pretty much it. So there's no rings, there's nothing to really do, but it is functional and it does, like, it works. Just can't say the same about the rest of the tests, but it works, so there's that. And can we, okay, that that's it, that's our game. It, it, it's functional, it works, good job, Grok. We can refresh and now we'll see Grok Code Fast is there, you can see the code, you can play with it, whatever you wanna do. We have it in history now. Let's go back to all tests, my favorite one, GTA. So let's copy the prompt, we're gonna go back. Just real quick while it's coding, I just wanna show you some of the different ones. So we have GTA-ish by ChatGPT, and you can see how this one looks, we can like move around, the controls are inverted. If I remember correctly, you can get in taxis, you can see the city, it looks decent enough. That's ChatGPT 5, you can see Grok Rock 4, didn't work, aired out. We have Mini Max Agent, this one was wild. This one was so good. You can kind of see the building lights and stuff like that. You can move around, you can see the status, the speed. Just to give you an idea of where we're going, Gemini Diffusion just failed, we have Perplexity Labs. This one had a problem loading, if I remember correctly. We have Claude 4, this one was just like a black screen, that one didn't work very well, and Gemini 2.5, Pro, and this one, if I remember memory serves correct, it just depends on how you load in. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you land on the ground, it does work and it is pretty cool. Here we go. So we're on the ground, you can see how it works. Actually see our changes, it's created a game for us. We can hit run command and it is going to open up our file which we can see here and wow. Okay, listen, it might've failed on the other task, but this is pretty, oh wait, wait. If I hold spacebar, I just keep floating upwards. How do I go down? Can I get down? I, I can't get down. I'm just above the entire city. So that's not a jump mechanic. That's like me floating. I also can't like move around. Okay, so I take back everything I just said. I mean, it's functional and it works, but it doesn't work as well as the other ones in terms of like feature set. So I can't spin. The cars are just kind of here. I can't really enter them. Oh, maybe I can. Okay, can I make the car float? Nope. It doesn't really tell me any of the, the controls, but E is to enter. Can I exit? I, I can't exit the car. So I'm stuck in the car. I can't move. C can I go off the map? What happens if I go off the map? Other way, other way me. The, the controls are all funky. It kind of does whatever it wants. So I'm just holding forward and it's just literally going back and forth. I haven't changed my key at all. I'm just stuck in a car. So does it work? I don't know, what are your thoughts down below? Let me know what your thoughts are on Grok Code Fast from just this test. And then I've also been using it to like do bigger projects with outside of this, outside of like recording. I can say I'm not overly impressed with this model. It is nowhere near as good as like Claude or Gemini or ChatGPT 5. I think for speed, it is really quick, but the speed and the cost don't matter as much if the code isn't good. Like right now it's just literally going on its own and my hands are up here. So our game just kind of 
self-running. And I think we're moving to like fours. I, I don't know what's going on. So we have Grok Code Fest here on the list. You can see what it's produced for GTA. And that is that. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Like I mentioned earlier on, I know some people are like, hey, you have to give more detail. And like I showed you, there's a range of prompts from really simple to more detailed. So the model itself can be like, hey, I should do this. Or, hey, I need these exact things. This is what I should do. I don't think tailoring the prompt for the model is the best way to test the model. Otherwise you can say, hey, I'm just gonna keep tailoring the prompt for every single model. I feel like these models should get smarter and you should just be able to throw any prompt you want. I mean, that's the whole idea of benchmarking. And I think in terms of benchmarking, this method, this system is good for like creating something from scratch, starting off, but I can tell you using Grok Code Fest for large code base that already exists, it kind of does whatever it wants. It's not great. That's just been my experience. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Leave a comment down below. Always love to hear what you think. Don't forget to subscribe. I cover AI on a daily basis. Don't forget to like the video as well if you enjoy this content and you want to see more of it. Just tell the algorithm, hey, I like this content. Show me more. So thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video.